Hey everybody, Melgen.tech here. Welcome to our deep dive into the world of CPU sockets. You know how much I love getting into the nitty gritty of PC hardware, and today we're tackling a big one. Choosing the right CPU socket is kind of a big deal. It dictates your upgrade path, your performance potential, and even how much cash you're going to have to shell out. Today we're comparing AM4, AM5, and Intel sockets to help you decide which one is right for you. We're talking about the pros, the cons, the weird quirks, and of course the performance. We'll break down each socket type, look at what makes them tick, and figure out which one comes out on top. So, grab your notebooks, your thinking caps, and maybe a snack or two because this is going to be a deep dive. First up, let's talk about AM4. This bad boy has been around for a while, first hitting the scene back in 2016. Yeah, you heard that right, 2016. That's like an eternity in the tech world. But you know what? That's not necessarily a bad thing. See, AM4 has gone through a ton of revisions and updates over the years, and it's supported a massive range of CPUs, from the humble Ryzen 1000 series all the way up to the Ryzen 5000 series. That kind of longevity is practically unheard of in the CPU world. Think about it, you could have bought an AM4 motherboard back when the PS4 Pro was brand new, and you'd still be able to upgrade to a pretty darn good CPU today. Now that's value, people. And speaking of value, let's talk about cost. Because AM4 has been around for so long, and because it supports such a wide range of CPUs, you can find some seriously killer deals on AM4 motherboards and CPUs. If you're working with a tight budget, AM4 is definitely worth considering. But hey, it's not all sunshine and roses. AM4 is starting to show its age a little bit. It doesn't support the latest and greatest tech like DDR5 memory or PCIe 5.0. But honestly, for most people, that's not going to be a deal breaker, especially when you consider the sheer number of AM4 motherboards out there. Seriously, there's an AM4 motherboard for every budget and every use case. Whether you're building a budget gaming rig, a workstation for video editing, or even a home server, you can find an AM4 motherboard that fits the bill. Plus, because AM4 has been around for so long, there's a ton of community support. If you run into any problems, chances are someone else has already encountered it and figured out a solution. You can find forums, Reddit threads, YouTube videos, you name it. So, yeah, AM4 might not be the newest kid on the block, but it's still a solid contender. Especially if you're looking for a balance of performance, price, and upgradability. Alright, let's move on to AM5, AMD's newest socket platform. This thing is an absolute beast, packing in support for all the latest and greatest tech. We're talking DDR5 memory, PCIe 5.0, you name it, AM5 has got it. Now, I know what you're thinking, Melgen, all that new tech sounds expensive. And yeah, you're not wrong, AM5 motherboards and CPUs are definitely pricier than their AM4 counterparts, but you know what? You get what you pay for. With AM5, you're not just paying for the latest tech, you're paying for future proofing. This platform is designed to last, and it's going to be supported by AMD for years to come. So, while it might seem like a bigger investment up front, you're likely going to save money in the long run, because you won't have to upgrade your motherboard and CPU as often. Plus, the performance gains you get with AM5 are nothing to sneeze at. We're talking about some seriously impressive speed boosts, especially when it comes to gaming and content creation, and with support for PCIe 5.0, you'll be able to take full advantage of next-generation graphics cards and SSDs. But it's not just about raw power. AM5 also brings a bunch of new features to the table. For example, it supports up to 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes, which is double what AM4 offers. That means you can run multiple high-end GPUs and SSDs without bottlenecking your system. And let's not forget about the improved power efficiency of AM5. Even though these new Ryzen CPUs are more powerful than ever, they actually use less power than their predecessors. That means lower electricity bills and less heat generated, which is always a good thing. Of course, being a new platform, AM5 does have a few drawbacks. The biggest one is the price. As I mentioned earlier, AM5 motherboards and CPUs are more expensive than AM4 options. And since it's still early days, there aren't as many motherboards and CPUs to choose from compared to AM4. Alright, now let's talk about the blue team, Intel. They've been playing catch up with AMD in recent years, but they're still a major player in the CPU game. Intel's socket situation is a bit more complicated than AMD's because they have a bunch of different sockets for different types of CPUs. First, you've got your mainstream sockets, like LGA1700, which is what their latest 12th and 13th Gen Core processors use. 
These are your bread and butter CPUs for gaming, everyday use, and even some light content creation. Then you've got your high-end desktop platforms like LGA 2066 and LGA 4189, which are designed for serious workstation and server use. One thing I'll give Intel is that they tend to offer a wider range of CPUs for different budgets and use cases. Whether you're looking for an ultra-affordable CPU for a basic office PC or a monster CPU for a high-end gaming rig, Intel probably has something for you. And in terms of performance, Intel is no slouch either. Their top-of-the-line CPUs can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with AMD's finest, and they often have the edge in certain applications like gaming. Plus, Intel has been killing it with their integrated graphics lately, so if you're not planning on getting a dedicated graphics card, an Intel CPU might be the way to go. However, Intel's socket strategy can be a bit confusing for consumers. With AMD you know that AM4 is their mainstream platform and AM5 is their high-end platform, but with Intel, it's not always clear which socket is the best or which one will give you the most bang for your buck. Plus, Intel has a bit of a reputation for switching sockets more frequently than AMD, which can be frustrating for consumers who want to upgrade their CPUs down the line. You might buy a new Intel CPU and motherboard only to find out a year or two later that there's a new socket out, and your motherboard is already outdated. So there you have it folks, a whirlwind tour of the CPU socket landscape. We've covered the budget-friendly AM4, the future-proof AM5, and the diverse world of Intel sockets. Ultimately, the best socket for you depends on your specific needs and budget. If you're looking for the best value for your money, AM4 is still a great option. If you want the latest and greatest tech and you're willing to pay for it, AM5 is the way to go. And if you need a specific type of CPU or you're on a really tight budget, Intel might have what you're looking for. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more tech comparisons and reviews. Let us know in the comments which socket you prefer and why. We love hearing from you guys.